Okay, so um, here's the uh, Christmas song, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire, the arrangement that is more or less a lift from the Michael Buble recording. And it starts off with a beautiful C major chord with a major seventh and a major sixth. So what would you call this chord? The correct term would be C major 13. When you have a a number that's bigger than seven, say it's a C major 11 or C major 13, it always assumes that the seven is there. So when you see C major 13, it's not just the 13 on there, you have to put the seven in as well. All right, and if it was just C 13, that means a C, like, it's like C seven with a 13, so it'd be like that. All right, but C major, C major 13, and then this one is, it's like an A altered chord. It's got a flat nine and a flat 13 in it. And then this beautiful chord. I'm not exactly sure the best voicing for this one, but uh, it's a D minor 13. The 13 is there. It assumes that there's a seven there. And then if you know which other tensions you can add, like you could add the nine, the 11 as well. And then we've got a G seventh and it's got a 13 and a flat nine all right now you could do a lot with these chords you don't have to follow this arrangement arrangement note for note you could have more of a triplet feel like that now I thought this was interesting right here. That, you know, in a jazz arrangement, you could certainly have chestnuts roasting on an open fire. You know, all those chords. But uh, they just started with something very, very simple. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose, and then finally we get to some chords. Yuletide carols being sung by a choir and folks. Now, you know, that's the most unusual chord change in the song. We go, all of a sudden, we're in the key of E major. So we got there, you know, this F sharp minor seven is kind of a substitute for the one chord it may not seem like it but it really is and then if you just follow that out to its logical conclusion you get the E major and then from E major a 2 5 1 to E flat and I listened to the arrangement pretty carefully here and it has kind of a pivot modulation in there that's where you kind of you know you start okay I'm on my E major seventh there and then that C comes in, and that's going to be part of the F minor chord there. So it's kind of like using a, I don't know what you'd call that. All right, so it's a tricky modulation. Let's just call it that. And, uh, you know, you can find that kind of thing in Debussy and Beethoven. And it's always just nice for on a piano arrangement to throw those little Christmas bells in there. You know, any note that sounds good is fine. And then just some very simple changes. This is a pretty easy spot, really, in the song to do. Just think about your sixth chords and just go chromatically into them like that. Now, you know, a C6 kind of looks like A minor 7th, so you could think A flat minor 7th to A minor 7th, A flat minor 7th to A minor 7th, A flat minor 7th to A minor 7th, and then, oops. Here, you could 
could do more with the, the left hand to suggest like a bass player. section and notice what does this remind you of it's using a lot more chords but it's just like the beginning you know it's a little recollection of that beginning so here it is on the final a section with a three six two five This is probably the hardest part right here. Is that right? No. You know, because you're trying to do three things at once or two things at once. You're playing these nice chords and getting those little string lines going over over top of it. So, you know, it helps to just memorize something like this so you can look down at your fingers and do it. pretty rich chords there again on the F sharp minor 7 flat 5 with a 9 in there. That's a very rich note, isn't it? I mean, that's a nice chord. It's got the 11th on there too, but when you add that uh, natural 9 and then a B altered, and that leads us right to our 3, 6, 2, 5 again. Now this is the solo section for the piano. Um, and, you know, you could do a lot more with this, too. You could do a little stride like this. You know, or you could improvise more. You could... Uh, something like that if you want to. It doesn't last very long, just that... Right back to the sign there, for the vocalist. And you can make it a little different the second time. All right, now this is a slightly reminiscent of the beginning like this, but, and I'm surprised that the you know, uh, didn't do the Barry Harris thing, which is like. <laughs> that kind of thing. You could put that in there, I suppose, if you wanted. So, And, you know, you could do some tenths in the left hand if you could reach them, or some fifths. I put octaves in there, but uh, tenths are probably the nicest. Somebody did ask me about, you know, how do you how do you come up with a good arrangement? Well, this is a this is a pretty good example of how to write a good vocal arrangement. Um, you don't double the melody, you know. And so I'm so I'm offering this simple simple phrase, but the melody is there. Phrase to kids. From one to ninety-two. I'm saying that, but my top note is that. And right there, you know, I've got an E, E7. This is right down near the end. You could do E7, but if you can't reach that, a B flat seven works just as well. Because it's the tritone substitution. Although it's been said. The top note's there, but I'm singing the D. Many times I'm singing the E, and notice it's been left out of the chord right there. Now the actual note I'm singing is this one down here. Um, but you know, at least I'm not doubling the melody up there on top. Many ways, Merry Christmas. There I'm singing the same note, Christmas, but I went 
started from there to there, and the and the piano goes from there to there. So Christmas, see it's a harmony. Merry Christmas, and that's certainly a beautiful little chord change there. And then you know the uh, outro is the same as the intro, more or less. Thought those little bells would be nice. And here at the end, you know, whatever you want to do is fine. Um, so there's a little tutorial on my piano arrangement stolen from Michael Bublé's arranger. Thank you very much.